The banking sector certainly has an impact towards a nation's economy. Banks can range dramatically in size, from small town corner banks to international behemoths. Talking Point connects with Mr. Sujiva Rajapaksa, Chairman, People's Bank. Welcome to the show. Pleasure. What is your vision for the bank under your leadership and how do you plan to achieve it? Uh, yes, that's one of the important uh, questions. Uh, I took over this bank a uh, little over four years ago. That was exactly 5th Jan 2020. And uh, of course, my long term vision when I was even when I was sitting in uh, listed companies in some of the large corporates, I wanted one day I wanted to become a chairman of a bank. That was my long term vision. So fortunately, I was able to achieve that. Uh, when I got into this place, I knew that this is, this place is, uh, you know, one of the largest uh, state owned enterprises or largest commercial banks. And uh, I, uh, I knew there are certain Sometimes, you know, when you look at private bank and the state-owned bank, you know, there are certain limitations within which that you you, you need to work. So, my, uh, I, I'm actually, I'm not, uh, my background is, you know, I'm from a village and, you know, with a, a different families. So, always I have seen how my parents were, you know, the par they, were, they were also visionary lead leaders and uh, they had, little kind of a micro type of businesses. So my father also had been a customer of People's Bank for a long, long time ago, now both dead and gone. <clears throat> then I thought that this bank is one of the best banks where the deliverables and the service excellence is concerned, even that time. So having said that, that in my mind, I got into this place. In fact, I wanted to have a major transformation in this place with my experience that I have gained over a couple of decades. But for some reason then COVID hit. So therefore we could not, uh, I mean I say, I, I, I must tell, I have a fantastic board of directors. Of course, I also have a, a excellent uh, management team and I wanted to change this into a different, <clears throat> different kind of level. Why do I say that in the present context, you know, the banking is always, it's an experience. It's not just transaction per se. Uh, when I get into a bank uh, branch, let us say, when I go and talk to them. So when I leave the place, once the work is done, transaction done, I must leave with a wow kind of in impact. If I don't have that, then I feel there's something wrong because of the fact that it's a service oriented organization. So if someone leaves with that kind of attitude, that kind of satisfaction, so that is what I wanted. So that was my long term vision. If you have that kind of, because end of the day, now People's Bank, we have got about 14.5 million customers here, customers per se. But then uh, altogether, we do have about 18.1 million uh, accounts. It's massive. So if I can at least satisfy, let us say, half of them, I'm sure we have done our part. So that is what I feel that we need to empower them. We need to make, make sure that, you know, my customers are satisfied in every aspect. It's not only customers, but also we have quite a lot of stakeholders. Now, this being the uh, government state-owned enterprise, the 100% is or 99.5% is owned by the government treasury. Plus there are stakeholders, mainly customers, employees, then regulators uh, and so on and so forth. So if we can satisfy them, I'm sure that, you know, we have done our part. That's my vision. How do you assess the performance of people banks under your leadership and what strategic initiatives have been implemented to drive growth and ensure financial stability in the face of market challenges? Absolutely important question because what do you, you know, who is a banker? Banker is someone who is dealing with liquid cash. It's not like another manufacturing organization where you have, uh, you have raw materials, you have work in progress and then finally you will have 
uh, finished products. This is not that because we are dealing with cash, liquid cash. So therefore, we need to be extremely careful when you are dealing with cash. While any organization, pro, you know, would like to have a growth in their business. How do we make sure that we need to grow the business? In the meantime, we need to, because this is bank is a highly regulated entity. We need to make sure that there are certain important parameters when it comes to banking. Let us say our number one is about the capital adequacy. We need to have adequate capital to, to run the business. Uh, it's, a, it's a short term, it's a medium term, it's a long term. And in the meantime, we must make sure we have a decent bottom line that we achieve for us to have a sustainability. We also have to have a, a, a portfolio, diversified post portfolio. So in a, in a simple language, if I am going to lend my money that I take from you being a depositor and then I give it to someone who in need of money. When I am going to give, I must make sure that my eggs are not in one basket. Mm -hmm. Say, I may give 10% to uh, uh, you know the fisheries industry, another 10% to construction. Likewise, you know you need to make sure that you have a nice balance in our portfolio. You need to make sure that you mitigate the risk, you balance the risk. In the meantime, customer satisfaction is also important. In the meantime, you also need to make sure that digital, you know, digitalization, digitization also taking place every month, every year, because it's a convenience that we are looking at. So uh, we uh, balance that in every aspect. While we are balancing, while we are having, you know, the maximizing our growth, maximizing our profits while we are serving to the customers. Now, my bank, People's Bank, is not a, just a conventional bank, by the way. Why do I say that? Being a government state-owned bank, our main motive is not the bottom line, not to uh, create, uh, not to uh, uh, grow my uh, profit or the balance sheet value because we, we have done so many things apart from that. If you take uh, COVID, let us say, because that's my experience, and this is one of the banks, one of the probably out of two banks, that is Bank of Ceylon and People's Bank, we have helped the government uh, immensely, let us say, to open LCs, to bring, uh, to import petroleum, to import gas, to import coal, to import drugs, to import so on and so forth. But I am sure, you know, none of the private banks wouldn't have done it because their motive is different enough with all due respect to them. But it is we who did it. So as a result, our main motive is not the bottom line, but to make sure that countrymen or the citizens are comfortable with every aspect. So that's how we look at it. How do you prioritize the needs of various stakeholders, including customers, shareholders and employees in your decision making process? Yeah, we need to uh, make sure that we, we can prioritize. In the meantime, we must again there, we must have a balance. Now, when you say stakeholders, yes, we do have our government, the, you know, my, my shareholder. We must make sure we return them certain amount of at least, you know, the profits by way of dividends or by way, by way, by way of levy. In the meantime, our large customer base, we can't afford to lose customers because it's a customer is the best, uh, I mean, the asset. And we must make sure we provide them the best service at all times, best service at all times. It's a, it's a customer experience again. We do have large amount of, say, at least close upon 7,000, sorry, 8,000 uh, employees. Again, I must tell you, employees are the best people. Employees, unfortunately, we have not brought into the, our balance sheet employees value because we can't bring in so far, you know, there are certain accounting standards we are talking about, but unfortunately, their value cannot be brought into the balance sheet. In case if I can bring, I'm sure their value must be at least another trillion, let us say. Such a huge value because they are the people who service. But in the meantime, we must make sure that we handle them properly. If we don't utilize them properly, if they are underutilized, obviously there is an issue in my balance sheet. If they are, if we can utilize it properly, yes, there is a... Uh, there is a positive impact on my balance sheet. In the meantime, there are regulators. I mean, central bank is, uh, you know, the regulator. And we must make sure we fall in line with their 
rules, regulations and everything. And in the meantime, there are other regulators like, you know, now if you take EPF, ETF, uh, Inland Revenue Department, many more people. And also we have Accounting, Auditing, Monetary Board, so many people and we need, so far so good, I think we have been able to, uh, we have been able to, you know, the satisfy them and while maintaining a resilience in this bank, which is very important. Considering the evolving landscape of technology and changing consumer behaviors, <coughs> what do you envision as the future trends and challenges for the <coughs> banking industry? And how is People's Bank preparing to adapt and innovate in response to these changes? Yeah, that's interesting again, uh, because of the fact that uh, COVID-19 kept us completely away from, I think, physical movements and things like that. As a result, uh, people, my customers also didn't want to visit branches. They wanted to have everything in their palm top, everything in their laptop. And it's a convenience, basically. Uh, I must tell you, People's Bank, undoubtedly, undoubtedly, People's Bank is the number one bank where the digital sphere is concerned. There are no question about that. We have everything uh, what our customers need. So, therefore, uh, we, uh, we continue to evolve that. Uh, because because uh, there are a large amount of, even at this moment there are about 30 40 projects are being basically undertaken by my uh, committed team uh, to make sure that customer you are satisfied with every aspect so we don't expect uh, now brick and mortar kind of you know the banking is now basically fading away and people need even now i we do everything from our, 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 our uh, you know the palm devices top, uh, yeah devices because that is what matters here and we'll, we continue to do that and uh, there are certain, uh, certain, I mean, a lot of things happening, uh, you know, the behind the scene and people are working day and night. Uh, that is what end of the day matters. But of course, while we are providing that, we also should not forget about the risk factors. Cyber security, now you can see in the public domain, there are, you know, people hack, uh, you know, the accounts and they, within a day, they take the entire money out and those things also, we are, we are very much concerned and we we spend or rather we invest quite a lot of money large amount of money on those things because to make sure that our customers accounts are safeguarded mm -hmm. while maintaining uh, secrecy and things like that which is very important and we do it continuously how do you prioritize and manage your time efficiently in your demanding schedule especially when dealing with multiple meetings and commitments in a day sri lanka is very famous for uh, meetings Sri Lanka also very famous for physical meetings. Uh, fortunately, because of again COVID, I think Zoom and uh, Teams and all that, although they have been there for last donkey's years, and for, because it came to light only after COVID. I, of course, you know, in my case, I am a very strong believer about time management. If you take me as a person, I, I get up at 4 o'clock and I have my set schedule. I go to my walking path, I do my regular exercise, I go to the gym for, and I spend about 45 minutes. I get into the vehicle at 7, between 7 and 7.15. And I go to my office, my private office. I spend about two and a half hours there because I read papers, I read mails and all that because being the managing partner there, I can't say that, look, yeah, I have to advise people. I come over to my bank and I spend about every day two, two to three hours here. Uh, but I don't compromise my timing and people know about that. Everybody, whether it is here or my office or any other place, they know that I am a, I am very particular, I am very strict person in timing. I don't want, I don't want to uh, waste your time, neither you, I don't expect you to waste my time. If someone doesn't come on time, I say, look, you can come the following day. Because in Sri Lanka, very, it's very unfortunate, people don't respect others. I always respect others because I go to uh, meetings on time. Sometimes I go at least five minutes uh, before the meeting. I sit and I do it. Even here, board meetings, when you say three o'clock, it is definitely 100% three o'clock. Uh, people also know that. So as a result, when chairman is, uh, you know, a little smarter than others, they also try to be smart. They come and sit here. Be uh, for a day, because my I have got two, three secretaries and they keep on loading in my Google calendar so many. But somehow I, I, I uh, manage that. In the meantime, I also should have a personal life. And I have my wife, two daughters. But somehow the, I make sure that I have a quality life as well. I go out with them. I spend little time. After maybe within a couple of months, sometime, you know, we go even overseas. 
so that's how uh, i may manage because i am one of the busiest persons but i strongly busy, uh, believe that busy person can find time that's my uh, one of my uh, golden rules in my life excellent how could you share some strategies or techniques uh, you employ to stay updated and educated on a daily basis amidst your busy routine yeah because uh, end of the day i don't think that i can tell that i am uh, outdated i don't want to do that every day every day i used to read magazines i even global co magazine now it has become my part of my life i used to read uh, every article and daily i used to read couple of papers and also i go to um, i spend little time on uh, bbc because they are only i we can update because when i go for meeting i can i can talk about what happened yesterday i need to talk what what's happening today so then only people will respect to they know that you are updated person because as winston churchill one of the greatest prime ministers in uk once he said today newspaper tomorrow waste paper if you don't read it today tomorrow is too late so you just put it in the dustbin so there no but that was happened that happened about i think uh, about at least three decades ago ago but now today because things are changing instantly constantly every minute there is something new coming so therefore if you want to become a perfect person perfect professional even a banker you must make sure you are updated with everything otherwise you will be thrown out from the market nobody will respect you when you go for a business meeting i even my private office my firm i don't go and talk to my clients about the exact issue i talk low many other things must be updated with probably maybe even sports economy obviously and my profession and many things and then only i come to the point so they are very happy mm. so i think very few people can do that that is also called one of the soft skills that one should have unfortunately in sri lanka i am yet to see a fairly larger crowd there where you have that kind of skills true as a leader how do you instill and promote a work culture that values punctuality <clears throat> and timely execution of tasks within your organization yeah i think uh, to answer that question you must ask from some of my employees how does uh, this leader behaves which is very important and uh, when i uh, when i speak to them when i when i uh, i, I sometimes you know i organize my own uh, lectures and things like that i go and preach certain things because when i know that look here they are not up to the standard they are not going to be future leaders because it's very important for us to make sure that they are being nurtured and also they are being mentored which is very important because people uh, don't care about that so uh, it's it's a sometime you know now you need to become a leader uh, you you need to know about the, your strategy for you to know your strategy of course you know i should know about what this institution strategy is now i have my strategy book here you know strategy in the sense people's bank strategy and we have basically agreed uh, by everybody and they are supposed to meet certain deadlines in terms of qualitative in terms of quantitative and there are no there there's no way that they can get out of course you know there are maybe certain practical issues where they can come out with certain excuses where they but other uh, overall by and large they need to make sure that they are they fall in line with that they achieve that of course you know we facilitate we listen to them if you want to be a good lead, leader you must become a good listener mm. and we do that at the board meetings and then we make sure that they are comfortable and then uh, we we get out from because of course you know the people's bank also we i mean in a highly competitive environment mm. because there are other banks also who are competing for the small size of humble pie so uh, we we uh, continuously on a monthly basis sometime even uh, once in two weeks uh, kind of thing you know we uh, relook at our strategies and we make sure that we achieve it so then it it's very very easy because everyone is comfortable there having held uh, leadership roles in both government and private sector companies what key differences have you observed in the work dynamics and decision making processes between these two sectors uh it's quite obvious when it comes for the government sector state owned sector uh, there are quite a lot of regulations because i have enough experience in working both sides now this place alone four years uh, because now people are little scared about 
uh, you know the regulators which is obvious but sometimes too many regulations also sometime you know it's not that good for a uh, any business to uh, have a continuous sustainable growth private sector of course you know its decision making process is very simple and there's a huge advantage of having uh, that kind of uh, you know the process uh, meets of many many challenges uh, because they board of directors they take a decision and then it passes uh, boils down to you know it's trickle down to the uh, other people and they take a decision quick but here what happens is now if you take state owned enterprises yes they know that auditor general is the auditor and then there are so many other regulators coming and then uh, even even our case we have we are responsible to the parliament and we go behind cope mm. and sometime in sri lanka as you are aware social media is very powerful and they unfortunately highlight only little negative thing whereas quite a lot of positive witties are not been highlighted which is not a good thing sure. so therefore we are also extremely careful when we take a decision even my staff uh, when they are been ex- expected to take certain decisions you know it takes their longer time because they are thinking so many angles including their job security and the promotions and things like that but private sector you don't have that because you take a decision and you justify why you did it even sometimes 90% right 10% is uh, wrong uh, but still as you as long as you can justify that it's easy but the uh, uh, culture is too different that my, i must tell you because uh, but yet you know state no uh, state on enterprises or the government uh, enterprises you need to have that you need to have that how do you ensure a balance <clears throat> between achieving performance targets and maintaining ethical standards <clears throat> within your organization yeah because uh, uh, if you ask me as a person touch should i have never ever compromise my integrity for a professional or a business leader what is important is uh, definitely integrity because i being a chartered accountant i cannot compromise that i am supposed to maintain my professionalism supposed to maintain my integrity i am supposed to maintain my objectivity and all that so therefore there are certain instances we as business leaders we have been basically pressurized to take certain decisions but then i sometime you know i also would have had yes i had certain sleepless nights when you are going to take a decision that will have impact to you as a person and you as a professional especially large amount of people are looking at you what decision you are going to take so therefore you need to strike a balance but in my case if my conscious doesn't allow me to take a, the, uh, uh, you know the decision i don't do that i take the right decision and i justify that look here this is what i have i have done it which is very important but that might sometime have, you know will have a negative impact to the growth of the organization but end of the day as long as you have done the right thing you don't have to be worried people will respect you even in the recent past i have seen certain things happening not here of course you know in the other, other, other outside i respect them because they have, you take the right decision at the right time if you can't do that you say no i can't do that but you have to justify you have to justify because there are as we discussed earlier there are stakeholders who are expecting you to do certain things but uh, in the meantime you need to make sure that finally one fine day the all these places are impermanent places today i am here tomorrow i will leave the place problem will crop up when you leave the place right then there will be so many people who will try to in sri lanka it's very famous right leaders unfortunately leaders very few leaders are coming up because of the fact that they don't want to become leaders because uh, that pressure is very difficult very difficult to uh, sustain when you have such a pressure but still uh, as as uh, leaders i think you are supposed to take uh, right decision at the right time that's how i look at what motivates you to continuously strive for excellence in your professional endeavors and how do you inspire your team to share the same commitment yeah so uh, i actually I, i was talking about the vision i always try to get into the next level every say every year i used to think about look at what am i going to do this year so then i make sure that i achieve those then i extend my vision then i extend my vision. that's how i have been doing from my school days i have been doing it so as a result you know i have been able to achieve so many things and 
even uh, becoming uh, president of the Chitra Chartered Accountant, which is, I think, sometime nightmare. It was a, it had been a dream, but yet I did it because of the fact that, you know, I have been having vision. Uh, so, these things are very important for any leader, any upcoming leader, budding leader, because of the fact that sometimes people do not care about that. But in my case, I always tell my people, look here, do these things, look at those and uh, have your targets. Don't compromise those targets. Never ever compromise your vision, but compromise for your vision. While you are achieving your vision, there may be certain obstacles. You compromise that, but don't for compromise achieving your vision. So I used to tell my people here as well as any other places. In fact, I have got mentoring uh, mentees also that I do it. So why, when you are having that kind of attitude, it's very easy for anybody to work. Anybody to work. So that's what I do it. And so far, I have been able to achieve whatever I wanted and I'll continue to do that in the future as well. Do not compromise targets. Do not compromise your vision. And most specifically, which is stopping it all is do not compromise integrity. Words of wisdom, of course, coming out from the chairman of the People's Bank. We were in a very interesting conversation with Mr. Sujeeva Rajapaksa. Thank you very much for connecting. Absolute pleasure. Thank you for having here.